Hi, this is David Olson with the Nebraska Forest Service with another tree pest detector uh, web series. Today talking about Asian longhorn beetle, or as it's commonly referred to, ALB. So we've heard a lot about EAB or emerald ash borer in the past, but ALB is actually one that was on a lot of uh, um, government entities and different organizations radar actually before emerald ash borer was even known. It was first discovered in the United States um, in the early 90s and probably has been here for some time longer than that but was a species of concern for a really long time and part of that is due to the fact that it can be very hard to detect like emerald ash borer because it's often feeding on the inside of trees and it has a very wide array of hosts. One of its favorite hosts is actually uh, maple trees and it can feed on a number of other things such as poplars, uh, buckeye, and just a very ash included, and just a wide array of other um, trees. But maple is by and far one of its favorites. And whenever it is discovered in an area, often that community will lose large numbers of its tree trees since maple is one of the more commonly planted tree species. Now with Asian longhorn beetle, it has popped up in several locations in the United States and so far we have been very fortunate that in all those cases it is, um, it has in the past currently been under eradication and has been eradicated in some areas. It's been discovered in areas in New York City, um, just outside New York City in New Jersey, um, Chicago, Toronto. More recently, there were um, infestations found in wildland forests in Massachusetts and southern Ohio. And then, of course, most recently making the news was the new find just several weeks ago in South Carolina, near coastal South Carolina. Now, with this beetle, it's very important that it's discovered early if it is infesting an area. This beetle is not known to occur in Nebraska as of yet, but it's something that um, could be here and could pop up at any time, so it's important to stay vigilant for it. If it is detected, eradication is often, or so far, has been very successful with ALB, uh, but that does involve the removal of a large number of trees and a very um, sort of effort between local, state, and federal governments. And the earlier we actually find this beetle, if it is in an area, the more money will be saved in eradication efforts and the easier those eradication efforts will be. So early detection is always going to be key with keeping this beetle out. So when ALB attacks a tree, it's a wood boring pest. And unlike emerald ash borer, it actually is boring very deep into the wood. And this will actually cause it to have a much longer life cycle. Depending on where it's at in the United States, it's going to take multiple years to mature in some cases because it's feeding on that interior heartwood that's much less nutrient dense than the area where um, something like emerald ash borer would be feeding. Now, Asian longhorn beetle, true to its name, is a longhorn beetle. It's a very large beetle that develops these large antennae that almost resemble something like a longhorn cattle. And its larvae, once again, are going to be the very destructive stage that's actually going to be harming the tree. So when the female actually comes up to lay her eggs on the tree, she's going to chew an oviposition site, basically just a site where she's going to lay her egg. They have very large mandibles that can chew through that outer layer of bark, and they'll chew kind of a little indentation in the bark where they'll then lay an egg. That egg will then hatch and the larva will begin to bore down into the tree where it could take several years to fully mature. After it has fed fully as a larva and matured, it'll pupate in the bark, or into, not the bark, the uh, tree. And when it does become an adult, it's actually going to chew an exit hole. Now this exit hole is going to be much larger than something like emerald ash borer. Uh, Asian longhorn beetle, when it chews its exit hole, it's going to be almost perfectly round and quite large, big enough to actually stick a pencil into. Now, we do have some native insects such as carpenter worm that can chew large holes into a tree, but often with carpenter worm, it'll be a lot messier looking. It won't be this clean circle of a hole that can easily have a pencil stuck into it. That's going to be very distinctive of something like Asian longhorn beetle. So things that we look for are general decline in the trees. Oftentimes, trees that are attacked by ALB take several uh, to many years to fully decline and die. So we're looking for kind of something similar with uh, EAB where the tree's going through a general decline. It might have limbs breaking off because these beetles are feeding on that interior tissue of the tree, making it less structurally sound. Another thing that we can look for is frass. 
Uh, frass is kind of just a fancy term for their poop or the shavings that they didn't eat. Um, they'll often push kind of this stringy sawdust-like material outside the tree as they're feeding. So in addition to things like frass, uh, declining tree, we're always going to be looking for those round exit holes that you could stick a pencil into and the egg oviposition sites. We can also be looking for things like branch flagging. Now branch flagging is when we see a branch suddenly turning color kind of uncharacteristically from the rest of the tree. Usually this occurs in mid to late summer when the tree might be a little bit more water stressed. Um, and what this is is actually the beetle feeding on the bark or um, attacking the bark of branches and twigs that could be causing that branch to flag. So that's always something suspicious to look at. Another thing that this beetle will do is it'll actually chew on the midrib of leaves as well. So if you're seeing a lot of chewing on the midrib of the leaf, kind of that central vein running up the leaf, that's going to be cause for suspicion as well. With the egg ova position sites, another thing that we can look for is when that female actually um, digs into the bark, maples are kind of notorious for producing a lot of sugary sap. We think of things like maple syrup. So oftentimes when the female first chews that ova position site, it'll leave kind of a frothy or runny area where that tree starts excreting uh, huge uh, amounts of sap out and that can uh, also attract things like pests since it's a sugary substance and can form sooty mold on that trunk area as well. So the ALB adult itself is quite a large beetle. It looks very unlike many things that we have in Nebraska. You'll notice it's a very long beetle. This is the male, which is actually a little bit smaller and is well over an inch in length, sometimes reaching up to an inch and a half. It has the characteristic long antenna and then a shiny black body with the white spots, which is going to be one of the key characteristics. You might notice also on the antenna, although it's a little hard to see, that they're actually striped. It goes white, then black, white, then black on each of the segments. And you'll notice here on longhorn beetles, they tend to have square uh, corners of the wings. You can kind of refer to them as the shoulders. They kind of look like shoulders, very square shoulders. And on the Asian longhorn beetle, you'll notice right in between those wings, there's a little area and that is actually black. It's not white. And that's gonna be something important to know for one of our native species that kind of looks like that. So remember with ALB that they're going to be a large beetle with the long antenna shiny black with white spots and then no white spot right in the middle of the upper shoulders we'll say. So this is one of our native longhorn beetles. This is actually the pine sawyer. There's a number of different species of this beetle um, but they can get quite large. These are feeding on things like pine trees that are declining and they can look a lot like ALB. In this case uh, this species is a little bit more brown. It's a little bit easier to tell that this probably is an Asian longhorn beetle, but some species do develop a more black and white color to them, such as the white spotted pine sawyer beetle. Now some key characteristics to distinguish between these two is that these guys are going to be quite a bit smaller than Asian longhorn beetle. As I mentioned, Asian longhorn beetle, inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there, these guys are significantly smaller. They also kind of have more of a downy or um, tawny appearance to them. They're not going to be that shiny black. If they are more of a black color, it's probably going to be more matte in color. And the white spots may or may not be as distinctive. Usually in most cases, they're not quite as distinctive as ALB is. And it's kind of hard to see on this specimen, but if you look kind of between the top of the wings there, there is a very tiny white spot. Now in some species, this is more pronounced and usually in that white spotted pine sawyer beetle that's very closely, or that might look a lot like ALB, it's going to have that white spot kind of between the shoulders, so to speak. So between just the size difference and kind of the more matte or tawny color of these pine sawyers and then that white spot in between the upper wings that will distinguish this from asian longhorn beetle and the other thing to note is what pests they're feeding or what trees they're feeding on asian longhorn beetle as we mentioned is going to be usually on a few different hardwood species most likely maple although it can be on other things this is going to be on pines which asian longhorn beetle is not going to be on so if you see this around a pine that's a clue also as to what this is so here we have our other native look-alike to Asian longhorn beetle, the cottonwood longhorn beetle. And this is going to look a lot more like Asian longhorn beetle, just in size and overall appearance. And you'll also notice that this feeds on cottonwood, as the name suggests, which is one species that Asian longhorn beetle can be on. 
Now the cottonwood longhorn beetle is usually going to be found feeding on the roots or the lower trunk of cottonwood trees, so they're not going to usually be up very high in the canopy, although they do have similar feeding habits um, aside from that. Just looking at the adult, we can see that it looks a little bit different. It's about the same size as Asian longhorn beetle, but the coloration and the pattern are quite a bit different. These guys are sometimes referred to as skeleton beetles for obvious reasons, that the coloration on their back of their wings sort of resembles almost a, a rib cage, and they kind of have a white, more yellowish appearance. The white that's on them kind of takes on a yellowish tinge in a lot of cases, and there's quite a bit more of it. You'll notice that even though the body is shiny, it's not so much spotted as it is striped or um, with more of that distinctive skeleton pattern on it. These guys are fairly common in Nebraska, so you might very well see these on things like cottonwood, but they should be fairly easy to distinguish from Asian longhorn beetle. So one of the key species that Asian longhorn beetle is usually found on are maple species. Now maple is a genus that it can include things like sugar maple, black maple, uh, Norway maple, red maple, which this is one of, uh, silver maple, and quite a few other species. Now, as with ash, the branch differentiation or the branch um, configuration is going to be what gives maple away or starts to narrow it down. Once again, we're looking for that opposite branching where the branches come off kind of like a mirror image of each other. And remember the acronym Mad Fucking Horse. So maple, ash, dogwood, buckeye, and horse chestnut. So immediately when we see the opposite branching, we know we're dealing with one of those. Now, maple can be easily distinguished. If there's leaves on the tree, uh, depending on the species, it'll look more or less like uh, the symbol on the Canadian flag. That's actually more of like a sugar maple. And something like the red maple is only going to have three lobes usually with more serrated edges to it. But uh, generally the leaves are going to give a maple away. Just think if it looks something similar to the Canadian flag and has this opposite branching, Usually maples are a little bit more spindly looking, a little bit more thin looking in the branches than something like ash. And um, once again, that simple uh, leaf, not the compound leaf like ash. So in this case, this whole thing is the leaf, not a huge bunch like on the ash. Now with maples, there are a few more ways to distinguish them from other things. Depending on the species, the bark might look a little bit different. Usually when maples are young, they're quite thin and smooth bark. And as they age, depending on the species, that'll get um, more platy in characteristics and uh, develop larger flakes, especially with something like a silver maple. The seeds are also very distinctive on a maple. We think of their seeds um, generally um, coming down as we call them helicopters sometimes, but those are um, usually going to be in sets of two on a stalk on the tree and it will eventually fall off. And that's one good way to distinguish box elder from ash is if the tree has seeds on it can make it very apparent that you're dealing with something that's actually in the maple genus and not an 